What's up, everyone? We are very happy to be doing another year of Meta Hacker Cup here. Um, this is the very first round. They changed the format a little bit this year, but uh, we'll still go ahead with this. And we're about to get started in just a couple seconds. So here we go. Looks like four problems. Start with A1. Hey, Dr. Cheeseburger. Zoom in. All right. S single and D double. Two parries and two, two parries and two cheese. Okay, sure. I see. So we know we have S, D, and K. And they seem to print yes. Okay, so we know how many. So buns we have are it's basically we need at least two decker buns, so at least k plus one and that is at least k. Good. Downloaded cheeseburger here. And this is going to be a little bit annoying. All right. Looks good. Also just get the full input. Yep. All right, we're good. This is the value. This is this is gonna be a little bit annoying, but an A. That's A. Let's go. A2. Ah, oh, these, are, these are costs. C dollars. Okay. This seems to be harder than, based on the point value, it seems to be harder than B. Let me do B. Let's do that. So I'll move, I'll move this to A1.cc. We don't have an E, so I'll call that E2. Are we in first? All right, nice. R by C. It's 1 1. This turn or column C on Bob's turn. The person loses their turn. I mean, you just want to go as slowly as possible, don't you? Why would you go more than. The answer is just who goes first? I'll push this first. Down. Isn't that? Let's run B. That seems fine to me. Damn, so.
There's only seven cases. I see. Why would you go more than one? I don't think you would ever go more than one. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. Don't need to do this. Just going to type it directly. All right. I'll put and. Let's go. All right, great. C or E2. Let's try this one. Board. Perhaps C. All right, let's, let's look. Some of the two apple weights. Two apples per, okay. Uh, okay. Got it, I see, got it. Okay, so. The smallest or negative one. Can n be one? Yeah, in that case, you just do one. Positive entry. Okay, so uh, clearly we know what it is modulo. Modulo n, two n, one of those. Um, Yeah, mod n. We know it is mod n. I feel like you can't iterate that many times. Especially if n is big. At some point, X is bigger than what? X can't go bigger than two times seven to nine for sure. So, so I'll do the A2, looks like it.
Probably should be int64. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, it has to be it has to make it a multiple thing, so we have to do that. possible. In fact, plus one. Plus the middle one. Oh, what? Um, and then this is not helping as much. What's the logic here? So basically, if I need to keep moving. Oh, you're just going to have to do it like this. Okay, so... Oh, that is interesting. So then basically, candidates aren't that many candidates. Let's do this. Um, and There's one instance of X, sorry. Uh, 
Oh, that's it's pretty different. Yeah. Oh, so the last one's gonna take a long time. Oh, I see. I have a problem here, actually. Maybe I can run this in six minutes. This is not, it's not great, but I think I can, oh. Let's try this. Seventy cases, right? How many of them are gonna be really good? Like, not that many. All right, we're taking a big risk here. Oh, I already did. No, I did that. Six seconds in that case, right? Let's do it. Let's go for it. Two apples again, I'll put no taste here, right? It only took six seconds. Yeah, I don't think this is the intended solution, but here we are. Let's see this one. We just have A, B, and C, right? Like two, yep. So we just have three, value, three input values A, B, C. They're pretty big. Okay. No C dollars. Right, so this gives you, so to build K, you need at least, what was it? One. Buns is twice the number. So two, two S plus two D is at least K plus one, and S plus two D is at least K. Can we just ignore the first one? Yeah. It's only if we buy all doubles where. So if we buy, if 
Or at least one single then we don't care about. Always we care about. This is zero. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Two times d is at least k plus one. K is at most. K is at most two d minus one. Two d minus one. D is going to be. Let's see what it will be. D is going to be C divided by So in this case, we just want to maximize s plus 2d, right? We want to maximize x, s plus 2d, which means in general, we prefer the one that is cheaper by Like we compare A and B over two, and which of those is cheaper, we generally are gonna get more of. There's only the case of, oh, I see, okay, so. If two times A is less than equal to B, then we should just only get singles. So it implies if C is supposed to S, right? Otherwise, I don't know if we even need that part. Oh, 
what's this? Five, one, a hundred. Oh, this is why. Okay. Okay, great. So this should not change the results. But it did. Wrong. Oh, as we see one B eleven. That was our original, so we don't need to reset this. doing too great on the penalty. A lot of time to make it. Alright, let's just move on to D.
Ici. We just need to know the parity of the shortest path. We can't even compute the shortest path. Oh, we take this. Oh, we need to incorporate. You take the choice path and like substitute in some sort of odd cycle. You even compute the shits. Um, what am I going to do here? We can somehow have the shortest path. I don't even know how to get the shortest path. It's quite hard. I mean, we just need the parity of the shortest path. What is We want to incorporate an odd cycle or something.
And we just take this. So let's If you have a shortest path, there's an odd cycle involving your shortest path. If any of your if your any of your edges are on an odd cycle, the answer is zero. Leave. The answer is okay. Yeah, it's it's always if it's negative one, it's always negative one. That's if it's bipartite. If there are any odd cycles, edges on your shortest path, and it's zero, otherwise you find the closest shortest your closest odd cycle to any of your path. Find the shortest path. Anyone on oh, that path? Is on that side. Just take the shortest. Path. Yeah, it's just the shortest distance from any node on our shortest path to an odd cycle. And then what? We're gonna find that's probably much harder. The only part I don't know is about one of the shortest paths. Yeah. 
So, hmm. yeah, it's how far away is any on cycle from my shoulder stuff? Uh, From my shoulder pad to make it look simple. Any odd cycles? So, I can find all the odd cycles. Hmm. It is way more points than this. So, oh, wow. Well. Did I get C first? No, I did not. Excellent. 
Okay. Um. Just stuck on this one last part. Seven one, seven eight. It should be zero, yeah. One to two. Oh, wow. That's very, okay, that's not really, my logic is wrong because one to two. Same thing, you can go around here. What are we looking at then? Are we looking at, are we looking at how many bridges? How many bridges are there between you and the closest on cycle? Okay, I actually don't think I have a quadrat solution either. This is definitely a tough one. Give us a tough one. Let's see. All right, but then we can use that cycle. It's like the bridge distance. Only bridges count. It's so weird. Only bridges count as distance. Which is fine. Okay, only bridges count as distance, is that right? Only bridges count as distance, but then if you have A to B, you can just find the bridges. Does that work? I think that might work. Bridges count as distance. This fourth piece is this third or second fourth piece is not very helpful. I think it was. I think this is the case, right? One, two, two, three. One, three, three, four. Two, three. Should be zero. Should be zero. Yeah, every path goes through the cycle, so it's just going to.
Uh, everything on the shortest path. No. Oh, uh, okay, wait, so, oh, I think we don't, so we have a shortest path, right? If we place the shortest path with the tree path, if we use the tree path instead of the shortest path, DF is tree path, then if it's the same parity, the answer is zero. But how do we know what the parity is? No, if we find any path. Huh. All right, let me write some observations. Yes, since this starts. But then the logic is take the tree path. If if the path same we can just find. Some one cycle involving a RBI, I think, or the tree path. Yeah, so basically, the answer is which distance from tree path to any odd cycle, find all odd cycles via DFS and look at the back edges. Back to Look at the back edge parity. We're going to find all these on cycles. Then we're going to t 
take the distance. We're going to take the distance to everything, every node. And then we just have a path min query. I need to find bridges. I need to. I need to DFS. I need to find bridges. I need to find odd cycles. I need to. I need to path main purpose. Really? Really? Okay, I can do it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Save parents. Uh, I guess this doesn't really matter what it's like. So we're looking for Okay. 
Hmm. We're looking for... That's fine. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna do that, and then now we're gonna have. We need to find odd snakes, right? We want depth here as well. checks for odd cycle. If this is an odd cycle, we want to To go, yeah, we need to go down and probably back up with the max position from the end to this. And then that, yes. Yeah, so this as well. So I'm do this. I do not know, and the weight is just e dot is bridge. Yes, and then we're going to take it back to the source.
I have to read. I still have to read the chorus. Uh, I don't read Q yet, actually. distance of everything, and then finally we need to create path and inquiries, which is line tree. With heavy white, no, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. These are just static path menu words. Tree I'm using is based on this is fine. It's fine. Okay, so tree Always the deeper mode, so in case it's, I don't, it's, you don't know, so it's pretty fast left just. Okay, so now, now then we have our cores. We basically have a situation where. This is a negative, these are negatives. Negatives, negative. And give us a test. I think that is a complete. So I'm gonna do this. Um, that's an occur. That's fine.
Oh, did I not build the way? Tree dog thing. Oh, that's the one. Give you zero right. A thousand coins. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we're good to go. Oh, I'm already behind. Number three, number fourteen. Yeah, I'm already behind. Yeah, we'll make too much difference at this point. Just some quick double checking. Alright, so where are we? So in a sense it's just a lot of code. This is not correct. Right? Why is it the same? That should not be the same. I mean, their graph is a little weird. Should not be the same there. Okay, well, I mean, I don't know that this makes a huge difference. Anyway, I think we're ready. I'll go for it. This is a lot, I probably should use it as if. Okay. This is a reference to second threads road to Nutella. Where he does a video series trying to get to Nutella on good forces. Alright. It took one second, so that's pretty good. That that yeah, that should be that fast. Yep.
Yep. All right. So I think we're sitting in a clean fourth place here. It's not going to change because uh, even if the next person submitted, they're not being this penalty time. Um, it took a lot of different components to solve this problem. All right. It's now a couple days later, so it's almost the end of the contest. As you can see, there's a little under three hours left. And still sitting in fourth place. Um, contest is going to wrap up pretty soon, and then all of the verdicts will be revealed. But before then, uh, we can go in and talk about, talk about all these problems, talk about how I approach them, and just the thought process behind these. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Let's jump into A1. Um, so this was the first problem. Uh, basically, you've bought S single cheeseburgers, which look like this, and D double cheeseburgers, which look like this. You want to know, can you make a K Decker cheeseburger with the ingredients you have? Um, so I thought this was a nice, simple first problem. It takes still a little bit of thinking. Um, you need to do a little bit of, you know, arithmetic, a little bit of um, calculation, but it's not too complex. Uh, Basically, what you want to do, you know, you want to calculate how many buns do I have and how many patties do I have, and then can I make a K-decker based on that. So the number of buns you have, you have two per burger, whether it's single or double. So that's just two times S plus D. And the number of patties you have, well, you get one per single and two per double. So you get S plus two times D. And in order to make that K-decker, for example, with this three-decker, you need at least K patties and you need at least k plus one buns. So that's exactly what I check here. With these two conditions, if it's true, we print yes. If it's not, we print no. Um, and that's it, that's it for this problem. So this is the first problem of the round. Uh, just a little bit of quick calculations and you're there. Um, next, let's look at, funny enough, problem B, which actually, is in some ways I think even easier than A1. Um, basically you've got a grid R by C. You start at the top left corner um, and then you need to make your way to the bottom right corner where the customers are. Alice and Bob takes turns. Alice can push the cart one to A, anywhere between one to A units down. Bob can push the cart anywhere between one and B units to the right. Um, and if you're already at the end row, the end column, that person cannot do their turn. The winner ultimately moves the cart to RC and gets the cart to the customer. Um, and so basically who has the winning strategy? Well, in this case, in some sense, what they do is independent, right? Alice only affects the rows, Bob only affects the columns. Um, and so Alice and Bob, essentially Alice is trying to get to row R as late as possible. And Bob is trying to get to column C as late as possible because once they hit that final row or final column, either they win at that point or they get stuck. Um, so for example, if once Bob pushes the cart to this final column, he is not allowed to make any more moves. And so that means he loses for sure. And similarly, if, if Alice were to push the cart down to the final row without getting to the bottom right corner, same thing for her, she wouldn't be able to make any more moves and she would lose. So it's, it's just about getting to your final row or final column as late as possible, which means both of them will always only move the cart by one every time as an optimal strategy. Um, and so since Alice goes first, we just wanna know, does she get to row R later than Bob gets to column C? Um, that's actually a really simple condition. It's just, is R greater than C? Uh, because if R equals C, then she will get there one move before Bob gets there, since she goes first. If R is less than C, then she will, of course, get there, you know, if you have a very wide rectangle, then Alice will, of course, get to the bottom before Bob gets to the right. But if R is greater than C, then Alice will get there later. And so Alice will win in that case. Uh, so that's it. So A and B are not important. You could even just, you know, replace them. Don't even use them. For example, something like this. Um, 
But you do need to make sure to input them because otherwise, if you were to do this, you would mess up your input for the next test case. But in terms of logic, that's it. That's problem B. So very simple here. Um, so I thought it was, you know, two reasonably good, easy problems. Um, they both still, you know, you still need to think a little bit, but once you think through it, it turns out to be pretty simple. And then there's A2, which is a uh, much harder version of A1. So you have the same concept, you know, same diagram, but now buying a single cheeseburger costs A dollars and buying a double one costs B dollars. So you need to know if you can spend at most C dollars, what is the biggest K for which you can build a K Decker cheeseburger? And now A, B, and C are all up to 10 to the 16. So very large potentially here. Uh, and keep in mind, compared to A1 where everything is only up to 100, you don't even have to worry about integer overflow or anything. Now we definitely need 64-bit integers. We need to um, be careful about our time complexity too. So there are a couple ideas here. Um, here we are. So first of all, um, basically because of the uh, ideas we had from A1, these are the two constraints we need to satisfy, remember? So 2s plus 2d is at least k plus 1, and s plus 2d is at least k. So to make sure, you know, we satisfy both of these, uh, I split it up into a couple cases. Um, it turns out that this inequality is generally much more restrictive than this one, right? Because if this is true, then as long as s isn't 0, as long as s is at least 1, this will be true. Uh, why is that? It's because 2 times s plus 2, 2 times z equals s plus s plus times z, right? And we know this is at least k, which is going to s plus k. And as long as s is at least 1, then it's going to k plus 1. So we're good. So s equals 0 is a special case. And we'll set that up. And in the case s equals 0, then this is our more restrictive inequality. 2 times z is at least k plus 1. And D, how many doubles can we buy if we don't buy any singles? It's just C divided by B. So given that, we just need to take that 2 times D minus 1, because K is at most 2 times D minus 1, based on this. So that's one option. And from now on, we're going to assume S is at least 1, so we buy at least one single. Um, in order to do that, we need C to be at least A. If C is not at least A, we can't do this case. Um, and so... Once s is at least 1, we can throw away our first inequality and just focus on the second one. s plus 2d is at least k. So we're going to start with that assumption. We're going to take 1. We're going to subtract a. And now there are two more cases here. If, if b is um, more at least as expensive as 2a, if buying a double is at least twice as much as buying a single, we should never buy any doubles because two singles would be better than a double. Right? With two singles, we get more buns and the same number of patties as a double. So if it's it's not any more expensive, just go all singles. That's what we do here. Otherwise, if that's not the case, then the double is relatively cheaper. And based on this inequality, um, this is the limitation that we have for k. We should mostly buy doubles. Um, so in this case, because if we were to have at least, uh, if we had at least you know three singles that we were buying, we could take two of the singles and replace them with a double instead. So we should only buy either the one that we already bought in terms of singles or two. Uh, and so that's what we do here. We just try maxing out the doubles and taking that answer. And if we bought at least one double, let's remove a double and buy as many singles as we can instead. Um, so th this is kind of the same thing in a different format. Basically, buy as many doubles as you can, or buy one less, in which case we buy some more singles. Um, we can also approach this as buy the one single or buy two singles, and that would also cover it. But either way it works. Um, so just a couple different cases to cover, uh, but it doesn't matter how large A, B, and C are. This is constant time, all of one. Uh, cool. So that's A1, A2, and B. Um, I'll be back for C and D in just a second.
All right, let's talk through C and D. So problem C, we're trying to uh, add one more apple to our two n minus one apples and then pair them up so that every pair adds up to the same total. Um, everything has to be a positive integer as well. So first thing I notice here, well, so n is pretty big. And then first thing I notice here is that um, obviously the sum of everything is gonna have to be a multiple of n because it's n times the common value. So we know if x is our new apple value, we know that what x is gonna be mod n. Uh, and then what I did in the contest was very bad, but it managed to work. Uh, basically, because of that sum, we know what x is mod n, and so we can keep bumping it up by n and trying. Then what happens is, um, once you have your x, we're gonna take all the apple values and sort them so we might have something like a1 a0 a1 a2 a this would be like oh well, let's just pick a number a6 right so I'll, I'll actually just write all these out let's say these are sorted um i guess okay with x we would have like a7 in that case so let's say we inserted x and we sorted everything then definitely we're gonna have to pair them up like this right This is the only way to do it. If you did it some other way, you would have something where um, one sum is bigger than another. Uh, so because of that, we can just check all of these. So once we have an X, we sort it, and then we just check that all of these are equal to our target, right? And that's actually what I did here in the contest solution. I just bump up X, and then I check it, bump up, check it, and so on. Um, and then, so this part is worst case N, and then this can only go up to 10 to the ninth. So it's actually 10 to the ninth divided by n because we're bumping up by n every time, times n. So the worst case is actually 10 to the ninth, which is a bit of a problem. And, and funny thing is it actually runs into this on the sample. So the sample runs quite slowly, but because we had six minutes, I just decided to go for it. Um, I ran this, it actually ran in six seconds on the full input, so it ended up being fine. But the better thing you can do is you can notice that, okay, so we're gonna have, before we sort, before we add X, we have something like this. There are different ways we can add X. It can go here, right? It can go here, it can go here, like depending on what happens after you sort it, right? All of these are possible. Uh, and if we look at all of these, we'll notice that if X is somewhere in the middle, then we'll have A0 plus A6 as the value. If X is on this end, we'll have A0 plus A5 as value, right? This one plus this one. And if X is on this end, then we'll have A1 plus A6 as the value. So these give us actually three candidates to choose from for X. And if we just try all these candidates, we can easily test them using the sort method we talked about. And then we just have a very simple n log n solution. So this is much better. And this is probably the intended solution. But if you're in a hurry and you have this, it's good enough. Um, all right. Let's see. And then finally, let's look at D. So D was definitely the hardest problem in this contest. Um, basically, we're trying to take a path from AI to BI in this graph. Um, it needs to be a different parity from the shortest path, which means the number of edges we take has to be um, either odd if the original one is even or even if the original one is odd. And we want to minimize how many edges we go through more than once in order to do this. So the way we solve this, it involves something called bi-connected components. Let me pull that up. So right here, this is a great example. Each color is a bi-connected component and then each Multicolored vertex is a cut vertex. But anyway, uh, what's going on here is we want to, we just want to kind of deviate from the path in some way where we can find an odd cycle and then come back. And so what ends up happening here is, uh, and I'll just go through this pretty quickly. What ends up happening is we can find all of the biconnected components. We find all the bridges, right? So this is a bridge, this is a bridge and so on. This is pretty, uh, pretty deep into graph theory. You can read about this if you'd like. 
Uh, but what we're doing is we're going to find the find all the bridges, find all of the biconnected components that have an odd cycle. So in other words, all of the biconnected components that are not bipartite. And then basically what we want to know is in this kind of block in this block cut tree formulation, what is the minimum distance for any particular node or any particular component? to a non-bipartite component. So we need to know how far does it take in terms of bridges only, how many bridges do we have to cross in order to get to an odd cycle? So for example, if the if the green is the only biconnected component here that has an odd cycle, uh, which is actually true here, then the distance for this node, for example, to the odd cycle is two because we go one, two. And then this has an odd cycle. It doesn't matter that we have to take another edge here to get to the odd cycle. It's just that uh, the reason being, we go here, we can use the odd cycle whichever direction we want, and we can go around and come back. But the bridges we always have to repeat. That's why bridges are something. Okay, so we do that with a. First of all, we there's a lot of code here, pre-written code. So we find all of the. So I have two versions. One is what I did in contest. So in contest, I find all the bridges. Then I do a multi-source BFS. Um, edges only cost you if it is a bridge. If there are bridges, only bridges cost you. And then anything that's in an odd cycle is the source. If there's nothing in the source, there's no odd cycles. Then every query answers negative one, so we know the sum is negative q. We can just quit. Make sure to read the input there. Otherwise, we run this BFS. And now what happens is we have our tree, right? Um, we can either use a DFS tree or we can use a block cut tree. But now we have a tree where we're trying to find um, how far do we have to deviate from our path in order to get to an on cycle in terms of bridges, how far in terms of bridges. Uh, and we can show that the tree path, we can just use the tree path instead of the shortest path. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but it turns out that if the tree path has the same parity um, as the shortest path works out, and if not, it works out. Another way you can look at it is you can just think about the block cut tree. In the block cut tree, the tree edges we care about are the bridges, and so that also ends up working out. Okay, so we just do all that, and then we need to query path minimums on this tree. And so that takes another data structure. Um, there's a lot of details here, so yeah, I won't go into all the details, but we query those mins, do that for all of the queries, add that up, and then we're good. And so both of these versions are pretty similar. Um, the biconnected components and block entry is probably more uh, straightforward logically for how it works. Um, but a lot of different pieces here, a lot of lines of code. Um, and again, more details, haven't got through everything, but that gives you an idea of what's going on here. So anyway, that wraps up uh, Hacker Cup's first round for 2023. I'm um, excited to keep going here, but that was it. If you liked that, um, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see future videos. I post a lot of different uh, programming content. And either way, I'll see you in the next one.